Hi everyone, well, good morning. Welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. We're doing a road trip today heading west to Ohio and on the way I have a couple diagnostic calls lined up. Uh, first one is a 2008 Buick LaCrosse. This is the last year of the legendary 3.8 you know, V6 engine. Low mile, clean car, about 68,000 miles. Customer complaint was he pulled out of his driveway and it just stalled out. Hasn't run in three months. It's been to a shop. He's replaced some parts. Um, ignition control module, all the ignition coils, spark plugs, wires, crankshaft position sensor, camshaft position sensor. He tried, uh, I guess, a refurbished ECM. That made it not crank because the mobilizer um, couldn't, you know, didn't want to relearn. So he put the original engine computer back in. Now it's a crank, no start. No code set, and I'll let you listen to it. So, let me scan it for codes first. So let's just read fault code. No DTCs. And when we crank this thing, let's look at some live data. <clears throat> Go to engine data. Engine speed. I we'll see RPMs, obviously. Coolant temp sensor. Uh, the map and the math. And how about throttle? So, we'll graph those. So, throttle seems to work. Look at the RPMs. I'm just going to crank it normally. It's really struggling, almost like it has a timing problem. Let's do a clear flood crank, so pedal all the way to the floor. So eventually the cadence gets better, now it's been cranked for three months so it could be you know, a cylinder wash. But when it's trying to start normally, it's really not happy. It's almost like uh, it's you know the ignition's at the wrong time, or the pistons or the cylinders are in the wrong um, the wrong timing. So what do we do? I want to put uh, since we have no other clues, check the basics: cylinder pressure transducer in one of the cylinders, then um, see if the ignition's occurring at the right time and the spark. Now, this is almost like deja vu with that Buick, um, I think it was a 97 Buick Century where the camshaft snapped in half and we had very similar symptoms. That one started up very hard and ran, barely ran and uh, the camshaft was snapped and it wasn't driving the oil pump and it was disabling I think three out of six cylinders. So we'll see what happens here. I think the pressure transducer will tell the story. And um, I guess during cranking, we could see if we have oil pressure, if the oil pressure light just, um, goes out. That's a thing to check, but um, it could be a similar scenario. All right, I'm gonna do a clear flood crank. And we'll watch the engine oil pressure switch and the engine RPM and the engine oil level switch. The level switch is okay. Oil pressure switch is low at the moment. So, pedal to the floor, crank it. Okay, pressure switch says okay. But the cranking cadence I don't like. So, let's do a stick a pressure transducer in one of the easy cylinders on the front bank and see what it shows. Okay, so we're ready to do our compression test. So, pressure transducer in cylinder number five and then since we have four channels why not grab some more data so here the spark plug you can see it's all black and nasty brand new spark plug by the way uh, it did smell like gas when I took it out so not worried about fuel delivery but I want to measure the um, just you know spark timing versus cylinder TDC and then channel three we'll just throw an amp clamp on the main power wire going down to the starter 
So we'll have three channels, crank it over, clear flood, and see what see what the data shows. Let's, uh, let's give it a try. Okay, channel one, 265 PSI transducer on the 225 PSI scale. Channel two is our um, ignition sink, and channel three is gonna be the amp clamp, so zero to two volts there. So let's pause it, restart it, key on, and full throttle. Okay, let's see what, what happened. Okay, so some interesting things here um, for sure. First, on channel C, let's turn on the filtering to make that a cleaner cleaner signal okay so I have rulers here 720 degrees right off the bat we see that the spark is nowhere near TDC there are two spark events per you know 720 this is a waste spark system so that's what we expect but look the sparks occurring 180 degrees out of sync so it's occurring at bottom dead center here on the exhaust or the end of the power stroke the exhaust valve should open then TDC no spark and then bottom dead center on the intake pull we have a spark so okay that's that's definitely a problem and it's consistent all the way across now what about the relative compression it looks like every second hump is low now the hump that they were measuring on this is cylinder number five and we'll look up the firing order in a second here but we have high current 160 amps then about 140 amps and then it goes up and down up and down up and down what could explain that keep in mind where the spark is occurring you know are we out of sync on all the cylinders or just number five so definitely a timing problem but not necessarily engine mechanical that you know the compression still looks fine yes there is a vacuum pocket because the whole engine is washed down with fuel so don't get too excited about that exhaust valve is opening at close to bottom dead center um, that's I guess that's okay so nothing abnormal in the pressure waveform, but the spark is definitely not lining up. And the relative compression is also very strange. Okay, so first thing we want to do is double check, are these ignition coils in the right spots on the module, and are the spark plug wires going to the correct cylinder? So easiest way to do that is find a known good picture, video on YouTube, Google, wherever. So 142536. So these are the original coils and these are the AC Delco replacements and sure enough if we go you know from here that's cylinder number one and then you know the one three five two four six I checked all three coils are in the right spots and the wires go to the correct cylinders so that rule that out but why is the spark occurring at bottom dead center instead of top dead center so we need to figure that out where is the crankshaft position sensor what is it looking at you know is it could it be a shifted harmonic balancer or something like that uh, let's do a little more research okay so let's take another look at this capture so this capture is the diagnosis it's everything we need to know we just need to think about it a little bit so this spark let's say you know it's obviously out of time for this cylinder but is it in time for any one of the cylinders well it's not because you know if the coils are swapped around or something this spark would occur at TDC of another pair but it's close to bottom dead center of you know of, of an a pair of cylinders so that tells me the ignition timing is completely off on this car 
So what's the history? You know, the car stalled out. The owner said it cranked normally. The cadence was fine. And the first thing he did was replace the crankshaft position sensor. Now, to replace that sensor, you have to remove the harmonic balancer. And the harmonic balancer has the actual reluctor wheel stamped onto the back of it. I found a picture right here where, you know, there it is. There's the, I don't know if it's a 24 tooth pattern, but it has two. And then, you know, there's the, there's like a fine and a coarse classic GM has used this for probably decades on this engine. There is a Woodruff key slot right here. Obviously, this pulley is only supposed to go on one way because it's part of the timing system. And the owner said that he doesn't remember if there was a Woodruff key. He said he just put the pulley on and buzzed the bolt in with a, you know, an impact gun. So that's my diagnosis right now is improperly installed harmonic balancer. He's going to have to take that off. You know, use a puller, take it off, and inspect. Where is the notch for the Woodruff key? Is the key even there? It could have fallen out, and maybe the balancer is just, you know, randomly placed on there. Um, because in, on this system, the initial ignition timing has nothing to do with the engine computer. It's the old school ignition control module, just looking at the crank sensor and making a spark on base timing. That base timing is way, way off. So this is an issue right here. Um, so we're going to end it at that for now. That's the diagnosis. The owner will uh, you know, get the harmonic balancer off and take some pictures, put it on correctly, and this car should, in theory, fire right up. It has fuel, it has spark, just the, time, the ignition timing's off due to this um, harmonic balancer. So we'll do an update once the owner gets that done, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Holy crap, that was one crazy Buick. Never seen that one before. Um, so, follow up, the car is back on the road. Uh, the owner, he sent me that picture. Sure enough, the harmonic balancer, he just put on there and tightened down the, you know, the bolt with an impact gun and the Woodruff key was 180 degrees away from the notch. So he said that, you know, the key got kind of smashed in there. The harmonic balancer is um, hard to take back off. Uh, so how do you fix that? Well, he said he tried removing the old key and replacing it, but it was so smashed in there, he couldn't get it out of the crankshaft. He damaged the oil seal. Um, so I told him, just... Put the harmonic balancer back in the right spot, even if there's a little damage, it should still, <clears throat> as long as it's on there, and you crank the bolt down, and it stays there, you should be fine. The car should still run. So you replace the oil seal, put the harmonic balancer on in the right orientation, car fired right up, no issues at all. So that was, uh, that was pretty neat. Uh, that was a beautiful example of a data-driven diagnosis, right? Basically started from scratch, the car had no code set, and we wanted to verify the basics. It sounded like it was out of time, you know, the cranking, really struggling. So I wanted to see where is the spark occurring? And what is, I mean, the only way I can think of to do that is with an oscilloscope and a pressure transducer. How else would you do that? Efficiently, 100% guaranteed that you're making this call. I was there for less than an hour. I was on the road. You know, I didn't want to spend all day there. There, and this is non-intrusive testing. You have to trust your tools <clears throat> and follow the data. So that was pretty neat. And we, you know, we got the capture. That took a few minutes. Just hook up a couple leads, crank it over. But thinking about it, you know, all the data is there, but you have to use some logic. To say, okay, the spark is definitely not at TDC, and it wasn't at TDC of, for any of the other cylinders. So something was really messed up in the timing system. And on this car, the crankshaft position sensor is everything. 
it tells the ICM when to fire each one of those three coils. So making that call with that scope capture, I felt quite confident, especially considering you know the history of the vehicle and the owner saying he doesn't remember that there was a notch for the harmonic balancer. So it kind of all lined up and uh, beautiful resolution. No parts required. Um, unfortunately, the you know the parts cannon was fired, but you have to look past that and use use the data. So I'll leave a link in the description for the pressure transducer. Um, it's still on sale. It's available at less than half the price of uh, you know the Pico unit. Works perfectly fine. And uh, yeah, you have to have the right tools and trust the data. So with that, uh, stay tuned for the next one on the Ohio road trip. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.